Hey there YouTubers, so in this video we are going to do more benchmarks in the i9-12900 but uh, in this case we are actually, if I can find it, going to do things a little differently. I'm going to disable turbo boost on my i9-12900 so if you take a look at this you will see CPU doesn't get above the base speed, right? So, what is that going to do? We should see temps a lot lower, scores a lot lower, etc. Now, I did it. I do have one gaming video out there. You guys want to check that out? Really low temperatures. So first, we'll do uh, Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility, and then we'll do uh, Cyberbench. 23, maybe we'll do 20 and 23. 20 is pretty fast. We'll do 23, just the multi bench. And I will try and get temps up for you guys. All right, so once again, multipliers. This may be one of the only places on the internet you can go get this information. I kid you not, because I think when I Google it, it's hard to find, right? So. Uh, we're not going to do that. Sorry. System info, just so you can see, i9-12900. 16 gigs of D5 RAM. There's our motherboard. We are using uh, Windows 11. A couple graphics cards in here. I know it doesn't show both of them. Yeah, it does. Um, all right, let's do the benchmark. And let me get up. Oh, this is driving me nuts. I gotta get rid of that thing. All right. I'll move the picture out of the way. So I'm gonna do this twice. All right, so we hit it. Seep utilization should go up to 100. There's our temperatures, way lower than we've experienced. And no issues, obviously, with thermal throttling, power limit throttling. So everything's good there. How is the score though, folks? We were at almost 9,000 with everything up. So, cuts it in half. It's still a pretty darn powerful CPU, but uh, there you go with that. So, what's the max temp? 38. All right, let's reset. reset this. And then let us bring in hardware info 64. And you'll see this this time. We'll do that guy. All right. It's cooled off. Here we go. So unlike the last few times I've done this, and by the way, we do have a knock to an NHU14S CPU cooler, which is 140 millimeter fan on a single tower. But that said, uh, one of the benchmarks, the Cinebench R23 multi-core, this did thermal throttle, and it's obviously not going to do it here. But for those of you that want to see uh, the temps and all that good stuff, some of the other information is provided here. There it was. All right. So we're going to move on. I'm going to close this completely. And then we are just going to use...
this window. We're just going to use Hardware Info 64 for now on. If it'll come up. Uh, by the way, I am using a secondary computer to record today with a capture card so that it doesn't affect the scores as bad. So it did not come up, folks. Um, interesting. Maybe it's coming up. See if we can get it to come up that way. Hmm. I'm going to pause this until I get it up. All right, folks, we are back. Hit and run. See that hardware info? And of course, I didn't reset it, but. So you can see where the score previously was. This was with the same CPU cooler. We almost got to 10,000, which would have been a record, obviously. Now this CPU, if you had it in the right uh, D5 motherboard, say from ASUS, that had the ability to adjust block frequency, you would get well over 10,000. This motherboard actually has that capability, but yours truly has not figured out how to use it properly, so we're stuck at 99.97. And I might get a better CPU cooler on here and get a little higher. Alright, so 5049. So that is amazing, folks. Look at that. Take away turbo boost, and if you guys saw in the video game or that I showed how low the CPU power usage was and what the temperatures are uh, for this thing to just about be the equivalent of yeah there you go it's a little more powerful than the i9-9900KF which we own and just slightly under the i7-10700K and that's without turbo boost so pretty amazing alright I'm going to hopefully remember to reset this this time I can get it to all right so we're gonna kill this now you did see how long it took for it to load up that was kind of a negative and I'm going to try and pause some of this because uh, there's been some complaints about the length of my videos so we'll show you a little bit of what the temperatures are and then we are going to find it then we will um, show you the score wow that loaded a lot quicker huh all right so this thing's pretty cool let's go ahead and run it now if you wanted the single core I apologize for not doing that for you but uh, Oops, I got something blocking my screen, dang it. This is the problem with using a second computer. All right, so there's that. And we'll give you, I'll let you see this for a little bit. This is gonna take 11, 12 minutes. So, I mean, if you've seen this, it's to me it's absolutely incredible how low the CPU temperature is compared to what we've witnessed.
This is obviously a powerful CPU. I mean, it's an i9. Yeah, it's 12th gen. So, all right, I'm going to go and pause this, and you guys, I'll show you the score at the end of the video. Hey there, YouTubers. So, we're back. And what we ended up with is uh, 13,272. So, that is, uh, that's pretty darn good, actually, in my opinion. Uh, because what does that compete with? I think, if I remember correctly, that's more powerful than the i5-12400 was. You know, you don't see it listed. Do you have the i3? Um, so, you know, temperature's super low. Wattage was super low. And we're still up here, not too far from the Threadripper. This, of course, is a laptop. Now, I don't know if I had one of these set up that shows the power that's used somewhere in here. I know we could see it during the other one. Yeah, here you go. So I'm not, you know what, folks, I guess I will give you the CPU single score. Uh, let me reset this and we'll see how much power this thing draws. And then I'll pause it again. So you can see that's how low the power is right now. Max drawn was 18 watts. And it's averaging 10 watts. So if we were to go back and watch the video, and uh, maybe I'll do that. I'll watch the video on the other benchmark just to show you uh, or tell you what the difference is what wattage we use with this thing full full uh, full open full wide open wide open whatever and uh, compared to what it is now which is basically 18 watts or less disregard what I said about the, uh, the wattage used uh, I didn't track that in the benchmark videos alright folks so uh, there's the final score for the single core uh, that's just uh, terrible. It's not as bad as the Celeron or <laughs> the Pentium, but it's way down there. Compared to, uh, see at the very top is what it is when you have it basically um, power limit set to unlimited and no other restrictions. That's where you would be right above the i5-12600K. But when you take away turbo limits it is uh it's down here at 917 so thanks for checking out the video please like please subscribe thank you